okay so good evening all uh, we'll start the session i hope i'm audible to you okay yeah so we will be uh, discussing uh, one of the uh, most important topic out of the 10 topics so uh, uh, we have out of the 10 topics we have uh, teaching research communication reading comprehension logical math data ict higher education environment so uh, there are some topics uh, mathematical reasoning is one of the topics which is being taught by the toughest topic by uh, most of the students so first of all let me know you please comment on the chat box uh, does mathematical reasoning comes on one of the one of the two toughest topics out of the 10 for you just give me yes or no or if it's easy you can say it's easy no issue just to know how you how is mathematical listening for you yeah uh, it's a tough topic for some and many of the cases uh, in my assessment more than uh, some 80 percentage of the students uh, feel mathematical listening as a uh, toughest topic okay one of the toughest topic along with that uh, there comes the data interpretation uh, then comes uh, logical listening. Okay, and these are also the first topic for them. Okay, so let's try to discuss mathematical listening. Yeah, so so basically, uh, uh, as we have discussed, whether for any preparation for any competitive examination, one of the most uh, crucial and important aspect is uh, uh, what we can say. Uh, uh, knowing the syllabus. Okay, similarly, we have a syllabus for. Uh, our uh, mathematical listing also. So first of all, we'll be discussing mathematical listing syllabus. Okay. So as for UGC net, UGC have a, a specified uh, syllabus for mathematical listening. So this is a syllabus of mathematical listening uh, because uh, it's very important. You have a clear idea regarding uh, what are uh, mathematical listening, what are the topics coming under mathematical listening. Uh, the reason is that mm, I can tell you. Um, there are many topics that are coming under mathematical listing. We have profit, percentage, loss, strain, upstream, downstream, probability, permutation, combination, ratio, time, interest. So there are many topics. You can see books of thousands of pages that discuss as different topics of mathematical listening. So when it comes to uh, UGC net mathematical listening uh, topic, there are specific topics. Okay, there are some top specific topics which you have to discuss, okay, which you have to discuss specifically. So this is the topic. We have types of reasoning as a topic, okay, types of reasoning. You have number series is one among the topic, okay, we have types of reasoning, which are the reasoning types and number series. Then you have letter series, course and relationship. I hope you will be knowing number, letter, chords. Then you have mathematical aptitude related aspect. Then we have percentage. Proportion, averages, fraction, time and distance, profit and loss, interest and discount. Okay, so these are the topics. So we can categorize all these topics into three categories. Firstly, we can say the basic topics like uh, uh, number series, number series, number series. Letter series, and we have course and relationship. So this is a first set of topic. These are the basic topic. Uh, you can see questions from this topic from uh, what we can say uh, most of the competitive examination. Okay, you can see uh, question from this topic in uh, most of the competitive examinations. Okay, these are the basic 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 topics. Then we have. Uh, questions from a uh, percentage. Then we have questions from uh, uh, average. Okay, we have percentage, average, then ratio, and proportion. This is a second set. This is very important topics. This is this set is very important. I will say most important. The reason is that 
uh, usually you can expect one or two questions from these topics and also more than 75 percentage approximately more than 75 percentage of data interpretation questions okay 75 percentage of data interpretation question is based on this more than 75 percentage of data interpretation question is based on this topic okay or from this topic so it is important for mathematical reasoning it's important for mathematical reasoning at the same time it's important for what we can say uh, data interpretation also more important or most important for data interpretation then the final one the exclusive topics i will say the profit and discount sorry profit and loss Profit and loss, interest and discount. Time and issue. We have profit and loss, interest and discount, time and distance. So these are the third set, uh, the toughest topics I can say. And these are very crucial in determining the JR because this is uh, the three topics are the latest topics which was added uh, during the last syllabus revision four years ago. So question from these topics are a bit tough in the past years and uh, there are only very few students who can correctly answer this question and answering these questions became very important. Okay, becomes very important for qualifying JRF because they are the toughest question. I hope you will be having a clear idea that those who are able to solve toughest questions, okay, along with the ECRL questions, will qualify JRF. So it's important that we are able to answer these uh, toughest questions too. Okay, these toughest questions too. Okay, so yeah, I hope it's clear. This is it. So uh, we'll discussing uh, the important, some of the important topics. So do you have any suggestion which are which are your toughest topic and which are the topic you want me to discuss? Maybe I will discuss only if, uh, an introduction today, but which are the topics you feel I should discuss? Yeah, so basically uh, out of this all, these are very important considering the data interpretation questions. Percentage, average, ratio, and proportion is very important considering the data interpretation questions also. So firstly, I will be discussing question from this topic. Okay, question from this topic, that is I will be discussing question from percentage. Okay, question from percentage. Yeah, firstly we have percentage. I hope you will be knowing what percentage is all about. Okay, you will be knowing what percentage is all about. Okay, it's it's making a value in comparison to 100. So for example, I have scored for 100 marks in 600. So I make it into 100. I want to compare this 400 into 100. So we'll be having 400 by 600 into 100. Okay, we'll be having it as, okay, zero, zero. Okay, zero, zero, that is 66 point XX. Okay, 66 point something. So basically, this is what percentage is all about. Percentage is we compare a value into a percentage aspect. So the most important aspect related to percentage is that how to find percentage. I hope you will be knowing that. Okay, we normally we find percentage using the equation. We have why this, why this. We have percentage is equal to suppose let's consider marks marks by or marks scored by total marks 
into hundred. Okay, so we have percentage is equal to okay. We have percentage equal to mass scored by total marks into hundred. Okay, mass scored by total marks into hundred is the percentage we have. Okay, percentage we have. Yeah. So there are basically three type of question. Okay, considering uh, other than data interpretation. Three types of question which are normally used from uh, percentage. First is finding percentage. Finding percentage, which we have discussed the equation. It's an easy equation. I hope you'll be knowing that. That is, we have marks scored by total marks into 100. Okay, marks scored by total marks into 100 plus equation. Okay, then we have the second equation the type that is increasing and decreasing type of question. Okay, that's the second important type. That's the increasing and decreasing type. Increasing and decreasing type means basically they will be asking like, uh, uh, suppose. There is a value 100. What happens if 20 percentage is increased and then decreased? Okay, if 20 percentage is increased and then decreased. That's it. So the thing here you should have a clear clarity is that. When it comes to numbers, like for example, I say uh, you have 10 rupees, with, uh, 100 rupees with you. I give you 10 rupees. Then after some time, I take back that 10 rupees. After some time, I take, what will be the amount remaining with you? It will be 100. Is it? You have 100 rupees with you. I give you uh, 10 rupees. And after uh, a few minutes, I take back that 10 rupees. So what will be the remaining value? It will be 100. But when it comes to percentage, you have 100 rupees. Okay, I take back a 10 percentage of the money from you. And then I add 10 percentage of the available money. The value will not be the same. Don't get confused in the first case. You have 100 rupees. I give you 10 rupees. I take back it after some time. You will be having the same 100 rupees, provided there is no other same business at the same time. Okay, considering the question. But when it comes, I gave you, you have 100 rupees. I gave you uh, 10 percentage extra to 100 and then take back 10 percentage extra okay then the value will not be same value will be different don't get confused let's try to do a question suppose we have 100 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we have 100 when there is a degrees of 10 percentage there is a degrees of 10 percentage 10 percentage is 10 degrees in from 100 we have 90 after that, we have an increase of 10 percentage. Okay, initially we have degrees of 10 percentage, we have 90, then we have an increase of 10 percentage. Okay, be clear that here when there is degrees of 10 percentage, this 10 percentage is 10 percentage of 100, which is 10. That is the reason why 90. But when in this case, this percentage is 10 percentage increase. But the fact we should be thorough with this and this percentage increases compared to 90. They are asking the question, what is the percentage of increase or what is the value of 90 after increase by 10 percentage? Okay, so we will be having for 90, 10 percentage is 9. We will be having it as 90 by 9. That is equal to 99. 99. Okay. Yeah. Here, one of the most important thing you should be thorough here is that in this case, when there is a degrees of 10 percentage, it is a 10 percentage of 100. In this case, when there is an increase of 10 percentage, this 10 percentage is 10 percentage of 90. So 10 percentage of 90, we have nine as answer 99. So even though there is a degrees of 10 percentage and increase of 10 percentage, the value is not the same. The value is different. Okay, the value is different, 199. So this is what we mean by increasing and decreasing. And then the next and uh, the most important question is comparing with 100. Okay, you have the concept of comparing with 100. Okay, comparing with 100 means, okay, comparing with 100 means uh, when it comes to uh, what we can say, uh, this type of question, okay, when it comes to this type of questions, uh, in certain cases, they will be saying, okay, in certain cases, they will be saying, uh, there is an increase of, uh, 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 there is a particular value, okay, there is a particular value, there is an increase of uh, 10 percentage, and then there is an increase of 20 percentage, then what will be the 
uh, new value or what will be the difference between the original value and new value okay which means the question will be asked based on the percentage okay question will be asked based on the percentage okay question will be asked based on the percentage but the thing is that there will not be any value so what we'll be putting we will be comparing it with 100 we'll be comparing which means you can put the values under so considering that there is a percentage related question uh, only one or two percentage increase increase a new value or something else is asked you don't know the value you can put 100 as the original value okay you can put 100 as the original value i hope it's clear i will be discussing some questions so the somebody has asking a doubt remember it's all about same if you increase 10 and decrease 10 from a particular number the value will be same but if you increase 10 percentage and then decrease 10 percentage from a particular number, then the value may not be same. Okay. Then the value may not be same. Okay. Then the value may not be same. Okay. That's it. Okay. That's it. That's what we have comparing with 100. Okay. That's what we have comparing with 100. Okay. Comparing with hundred yeah we will try to do the question that time you will be clear uh, yeah try to do this one somebody still will be having needed more clarity but we will uh yeah yeah uh, without using hundred also we'll be having the same you can use um yeah you can use 200 when there is an increase of 10 percentage we have it as uh, 220 when there is a decrease of 10 percentage it's 220 minus 22 that is equal to 198 okay 198 so initial number is 200 new number is 198 so it doesn't matter whether you have uh, 100 200 or any number increasing a percentage and decreasing the same percentage will not give you the same value the reason is here the 10 percentage is that of 200 here the 10 percentage is that of 220 that's the difference okay that's the reason so try to do this question and give me answer the same thing if the price of a book is first decreased by 25 percentage and then increased by 20 percentage the net change in the price will be what okay the net change in the price will be what that's a question okay So what we will be doing, there is an increase of uh, increase and decrease of percentage. We don't know the exact value, but we what we can do, we can put 100 as the original value. If there is a question in which there is an increase and decrease of percentage and we don't know the original value, then just put 100 as the original value. I know it will be a bit difficult to initially understand the concept if you are first to this, but we will be discussing some questions. That time it will be clear, okay? Yeah. We'll try to do, let's try to do, okay. So here we don't know what the original value is. So what we'll be doing, let's put, let's put 100 as the original value. Okay, let's put 100 as the original value uh, then first degrees by 25 percentage so decrease of 25 percentage 100 minus 25 that is equal to 75 then there is increase of 20 percentage so 25 percentage of 100 is 25 so we have decrease we are subtracting 25 from 100 we have 75 as answer Next, we have that is an increase of 25 percentage. What 25 percentage? 25 percentage of 75. That is okay. No, sorry, 20 percentage. It's increase of 20 percentage. So, 20 percent of 75, we have it is 50. So, it will be having 75 plus 15, that is equal to 90. But what is the question? Question is net change of the price will be what? Okay, net change of the price will be what? What will be net change of price? The initial price is 100 and the new price is 100. So the difference will be 
100 minus 90 that is equal to 10. Okay, the difference will be 100 minus 90 that is equal to 10. So the question you will be having here is uh, how uh, it's easily we can um, conclude or we can find the answer for 20 percentage of 75. So it's basic, uh, there is a basic concept which you can use to do finding percentage fastly. For example, consider if there is a value 63,000 or 6,300. So we can say if 6,300 is the original value, then 6,300 is the uh, under percentage of the original value. Okay, which means if you get a 600 out of 600 in an example, you have 100 percentage of the mark. Similarly, okay, we have six considered 63 percentage, 63,000 as the original value, which means 63 percentage will be 100. So we can cancel one zero from both that, that is 630 will be equal to 10. And again, canceling one zero, 63 is equal to one. So which means if 6,300 is 100 percentage, then we can say 630 is 10 percentage and 63 is 1 percentage. That's the basic thing. Also, so the question you'll be having is a consider we have a 75 as a value. Okay, 75 as a value. What will be our 10 percentage and 1 percentage? So because this can be easily done only in cases when you have two or more zeros. But you can apply in the same other 75 is a value. So we have 75 is 100 percentage. 7.5 is 10 percentage and 0.75 is 1 percentage. Okay, so in case of 75, so in case of 75, we'll be having, okay, we'll be having uh, 75 has the 100 percentage and 7.5 has the 10 percentage. 0.75 has the 100 percentage. Okay, 0.75 has the, sorry, 1 percentage. 1 percentage. 75 is 100 percentage. 7.5 is a 10 percentage, 0.75 was a 1 percentage, okay. Then the question here is, what is the 21st percentage of 75? So we have 10 percentage of 75 is 7.5, which means 20 percentage of 75 is 7.5 into 2, that is equal to 50. Okay, 20 percentage of 75 is 7.5 into 2, that is equal to 50. Okay, that is equal to 50. Okay, so I hope it's clear. Is it clear? Putting 100, adding 25, subtracting. So let's move to the next question. Mm, yeah, try to do this one. Just a minute. Yeah, try to do this first. A number is decreased by 10 percentage and then increased by 10 percentage. The number so update is 10 less than the original number. Find the original numbers. Okay, try to do. Number is decreased by 10 percentage and then increased by 10 percentage. The number so obtained is 10 less than the original. Okay. The number so obtained is 10 less than the original number. What was the original number? That's the question. Yeah, let's try to do. So what we'll be doing in all percentage cases, if we don't know the original number, let's try to put one word. Let's let's consider hundred as the original value. So we have. Decreased by 10 percentage. Okay. Decreased by 10 percentage means 100 minus 10 that is equal to 90. Then we have increased by 10 percentage. We have 90 plus 10 percentage of 90. We have already discussed if 90 is 100 percentage, then 10 cancel and will be 10 percent. 90 plus 10, that is equal to 99. So we have the original value as 100 and the new value is 99. If we put 100 as a, if we put 100 as original value, that's important. So we can have 100 minus 90 is equal to 1. But here the difference is 1. But the question is, the difference is 10 less. So there are two ways you can answer this. When we put 100, the difference is 1. 
when we put 200 corresponding the difference may be 2 and when we put 1000 we can say difference is 10 okay difference is set uh, time so let's take the answer 1000 is that correct but in this case initially you can see that in the option there is no 100 so there is no point in me taking 100 in the initial time itself uh, is another method you can do what okay you can take 100 assertion value, 1000 assertion value initially itself because we'll be considering the options. In the option, we don't have any 100. There are two ways you can solve this question. You can put the original value as 100 and you will find the difference. The difference will be 1. So, but here it's given that the difference is 10. So, what we will be concluding? We'll be concluding that when we put 100 as a value, the difference is 1. And when we'll be putting 1000 as a value, the difference will be 10. And you, uh, you have option 1000 as a correct answer. The second method, instead of 100, we will be putting 1,000. Why not 1,000? Why not 100? Because there is no option of 100 in the question. Okay. There is no option of 100 in the question. That's the reason why we pick so. So, I hope it's clear. Yeah, it's 1,000. So, let's move to another question. Mm. Yeah, try to do this one. Another in every every these questions are the previous question. Okay. So give me the answer. It's a it's a different type of question that are asked in the previous question. A student has to obtain 30 percentage of the total marks to pass. Okay. A student has to obtain 33 percentage of the total marks to pass. He got 125 marks and failed by 40 marks. The maximum marks are that's the question. A student has to obtain 33% of the total marks to pass. He got 125 marks and will by 40 marks. The maximum marks are. Can anybody give me the answer? So the question is given. Uh, student, uh, to pass a particular exam, a student has to obtain 33% marks. Okay, 33% mark. But he got 125 marks only. And so he failed by 40 marks. What is the maximum mark of this particular competitive examination? That's the question. Yeah. So let's try to answer. It is given that 33 percentage. 33% It's given that 33 percentage is a mark required to pass. Okay, 33 percentage is a mark required to pass. And it's given when he scored 125. So let's consider marks to pass. So it's given when he got 125 marks, he failed by 40 marks. So even after scoring 120 marks, 125 marks, he failed by 40 marks. So we can say the marks to pass is 125 by 40, that is equal to 165. Okay, so we have the marks to pass, 125 by 40, that is equal to 165. Okay, we have 165, 165. So we have 165 is a mark required to pass. It's simple. Consider in an exam of 100 marks, you scored 30 and uh, you fail by 10 marks. Consider you scored 30 and you fail by 10 marks. We can say the marks to pass is 30 plus 10, 40. The same way here it's given that, okay, in the same way it's given that, Percentage to pass is 33 and mask to pass is okay, 165. Then we'll be considering total mark. Now we can say we can say 165 is equal to 33 percentage. Okay, we can say 165 is equal to 33 percentage. So the question is what is the total mark or what is the maximum mark? So let's put maximum mark as X. Okay. 
maximum access x and it is 100 percentage we are sure that maximum mark is 100 percent so we'll be solving x x is equal to One sixty-five into hundred by thirty-three. That is this. This cancel five into hundred. That is equal to five hundred. So correct answer. Okay, five into hundred. So we have five hundred as a correct answer. So in this particular question, the total mark is okay. In this particular question, the total mark is five hundred. I hope it's clear. Do let me know is it clear or if you have any doubts. Okay, any doubts? Yeah, so that's it. So this is the basic thing you have to study regarding the percentage. Next, we'll be giving a lot of previous year questions from the percentage concept. Okay, a lot of previous questions. You can do those and we'll be clarifying your doubts also. So I will just introducing the next concept. Okay, I'll try to introduce the next concept or the next topic. I will give a small introduction regarding the next topic. That is the percentage. Yeah, so this is comparatively easy topic, but we, since we have to discuss a lot, I'm making it a little bit faster. Okay, we have average. So average is a second important topic. It's it's an easy topic. We have a simple equation. Okay, when it comes to average, we have a simple equation that is average is equal to. Okay, average is equal to. We have average is equal to total value by number of observation. Okay, we have average is equal to total value by number of observation. Okay, so what is average all about? Okay, average is we can just consider we have a classroom and we have uh, 10 students in the classroom and 10 students have different amount of uh, cash with them. Okay, consider. Okay, uh, assume uh, 10 students. Uh, for example, one student has. 100 another students have 200 another have 50 okay another has 500 so on so so the question is uh, what we'll be saying uh, uh, if i collect all the money from 10 individual students i distributed it equally to all the same value what will be that same value that's what we mean by average okay that's what we mean by average okay that's what average is all about so let's try to do two or three questions from average yeah, the average of seven consecutive numbers is 20. The largest of these numbers is. This is some sort of easy question that are being asked. The average of seven consecutive numbers is 20. The largest of these numbers is. So it's seven consecutive numbers. So we have the equation for averages we have. Average is equal to total value by number of observations. Okay, average is equal to total value by number of observations. Okay, average is equal to total value by we have number of observations. So what's the total value? Let's consider consecutive numbers is one, two, three. Okay, uh, just numbers. So let's consider the initial number as x. Initial number is x as consider. So what we'll be having x plus first number, second one x plus one, third number x plus two, fourth number x plus three, fifth number x plus four, fifth number sixth number x plus five, and seventh number x plus six. So this is a total value. X is the initial number. By total number is seven. We it's given that it's twenty. So this is the total value divided by the number of values. We have the values 20. So we have 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x, 6x, 7x. 7x plus 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 6, 6, 4, 10, 15, 21. 7x plus 21 by 7 is equal to 20, which gives 7x plus 21 is equal to 
7 into 20, 140. So we have 7x is equal to 140 minus 21. That is equal to 190. So x is equal to 119 by 7. That is equal to 70. So we have just the value is 70. Okay, we'll be having the value as 17 is a value in this case. Okay, we have 17 as a value. Yeah, but what is 17? 17 is a initial number x is 17. Initial number x is 17. Okay, initial number x is 17. The average of seven consecutive numbers is 20. The largest is a question. So we have initial number is 17 and largest is 17 plus 6. That is equal to 23. Okay, largest is 17 plus 6. That is equal to 20. Okay, we have. 17 plus 6, that is equal to 23, is the largest number. So we have 23 as a correct answer. I hope it's clear. This is uh, putting x as the initial value and then we'll be adding. But you can also do it in a different way also. How we have, it's seven consecutive numbers. We have the uh, average is the mid, middle number, is it? So we have the middle number of 17, given average. 7 consecutive numbers 20. Sorry, the middle number is 20. So it's 7 numbers. So 20 is 1 number. So we'll be having 6 more numbers, 3 numbers before and 3 numbers after. So 19, 18, 17, 21, 22, 23. So we have 17, 18, and 20, 21. 22, 23. Okay, 21, 22, 23. That's it. Yeah, this is it. I hope it's clear. I will be doing a similar number. Somebody is asking regarding uh, some other question. Yeah, try to do this. The average of five consecutive odd numbers is 61. What is the difference between the highest and lowest number? Yeah, so here it's given the average of five consecutive order numbers is 61. What is the difference between the highest and lowest? Okay, so it's about five consecutive order numbers. The difference between highest and lowest order number, if we know if one is x, next order number will be x plus two. It will be the same, next will be x plus four because the difference between odd numbers and even numbers will be two. But here the thing is that it's very easy question because the average of five consecutive odd numbers, five. So we have x, x plus two, x plus four, x plus six, and x plus eight. So we'll be having x as first number, x plus two as a second number, x plus four as a third number, x plus six as a, sorry, fourth number, and x plus eight as a, okay. Fourth number. Look at fourth number. So here, no need of answering 61. So because the question is, what is the difference between the highest and lowest number? What's the highest number? X plus 8. What is the lowest number? X. So we have X plus 8 minus X is equal to 8 as the correct answer. Okay, so it's the direct one. We'll be having 8 as the correct answer. Okay, we'll be having 8 as the yeah, it is the correct answer. Yeah, that's it. Uh, any doubts you can ask. And the next session, uh, I will be winding up. So the next session, we'll be giving you all this uh, percentage average and ratio of questions. It's available. The series of sets is available. Uh, we'll be having a doubt clearing of the next question. Uh, you'll be asking me which question to discuss. Okay, because the basic things regarding percentage and average I have discussed. And also we'll try to discuss doubts from ratio. Also, if needed, theory will be discussing that. So try to do questions from a percentage, average, and ratio for the upcoming session. And we'll be discussing those in detail. Okay. Yeah, that's it. If any doubts you can ask, else we'll be right now.
yeah whole number means uh, it's odd odd 13579 and even number means 2468 okay okay so any any more doubts if not then we'll be winding up okay yeah here uh, in the last question okay if i want to see, this may be the last question here the question is the difference between the highest and the lowest number so here it's a five consecutive odd number. What do you mean by odd number? Odd number means one, three, five, seven, etc. But the difference is two. Five. Five odd numbers are the consecutive. Consecutive means okay, one after the other. So if we put the first odd number as x, we can give the second odd number as x plus two, and the third one as x plus four, and the fourth one as x plus six, and the fifth one as x plus eight. So the question is: what is the difference between the first and the fifth? Or difference between the highest and lowest. So this is the lowest one and this is the highest one. So it'll be just minusing x, x from x plus 8. When we minus x plus x from x plus 8, we have 8 as the correct answer. 8 as the correct answer. Okay. So I hope it's clear. There are no more doubts. Yeah, it's not about the equation. We are considering that. Yeah, we have to discuss 20% of 75. If you ask me what is 20% of 75, it's simple. If 75 is 100 percentage, if 75 the is the is a given value, we can say that if 75 is a given value, we can say that it's 100 percentage. So 10 percentage means we'll be just canceling zero from both sides or just putting the point to left. So here will be point, here will be point normally, but we'll not be putting since the point is just. We'll put the point one less than it will be 10. One here, it will be 7.5. So we'll be having 7.5 is 10 percentage. So when considering 75, we have 7.5 as a 10 percentage from which we'll be having 20 percentage is a double of 7.5. That is equal to 50. Double of 7.5, we have it as 15 as a correct answer. I hope it's clear. Is it clear? Any more doubts? Okay. Thank you. I hope that's clear. We'll be discussing more. Okay. In the next session. Okay. Yeah. You will get the recordings of this session. Okay. Complete recordings will be available. Okay. So that's it. Uh, if you have further any doubts, which is not discussed here, I am asking. You can ask our team members also for the Okay, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you all.